there should be something on this screen but nothing is happening I've got the DVD it's playing okay I can see the counter moving all the controls look like they're set correctly in fact when I turn up the volume So we do have audio coming through and I've noticed when I press the horizontal vertical delay button yep we do get a brief flash on the screen so the tube is working so I don't think there's anything seriously wrong with this but there is something that needs to be fixed so I'll turn this monitor around and on the side you can see just how incredibly long this is despite having a screen area about the same size as a modern phone. A flat panel, this is not. Back of the unit, the audio is just going into the audio input and the video is feeding into the composite connection. This monitor, however, has other inputs, including RGB and component, which use these extra connections. And that's why I dug up this old DVD player because on the back it has some extra outputs. What's interesting for me is the Y and the CB and the CR output. These three, despite being labeled differently to these three different connectors, are actually compatible with the component input. So I should be able to hook these up. Before opening up this monitor to see what's going on inside, I wanna try hooking up a component video connection. Now you might notice this monitor uses these B and C connectors and I only have RCA cables to plug into them. So to connect to the composite input, I've been using this BNC to RCA adapter. I went out and I got three more of these BNC to RCA adapters. BNC connections tend to be used on professional gear because they have a locking mechanism that holds any cable you've got in place. I'm not using this for professional reasons, so I'm more than happy to just use these adapters. And then three connections for the video signal. Red, green and blue. Though technically it's blue and red minus luminance, plus luminance itself. And then it can deduce green from those three. For the audio, I'm going to use the cable I was using before. And that should be set up. On the DVD player, I just need the audio and the three video signals connected to their respective colors. Green, blue, and red. This is a very weird DVD player and I can't find anything about the manufacturer. It also has a microphone input indicating this could be related to karaoke equipment. It's also got a USB input which I presume relates to its ability to play MPEG-4 files. Okay, the DVD is now playing, and there's a switch on the front to switch the inputs. And look at that, we've got an image. This is good news, this means this monitor does actually mostly work. Something I am noticing on the camera is there is a flicker on this screen as it's being recorded. That's going to be due to a mismatch of the frame rate coming from here and the frame rate recording on the camera. So as well as needing to fix this monitor, I am also going to have to learn about recording different frame rates. The first thing I'm going to try is adjusting the shutter speed. And as you can see, it changes the rate of flicker and that shutter speed is way too low. Okay, I've played around with the camera settings and I managed to get a stable picture. To do this, I had to change the recording frame rate on my camera from 25 frames a second to 30 frames a second. Now it's not perfect yet. You'll notice that there is still a dark band on the screen sometimes. 
so I do have more to learn about recording CRTs. Something I've learned is this DVD player only ever outputs at 30 frames per second. And that's regardless of whether it's playing media recorded at 25 frames a second or 24 frames a second. So I really want to ditch this DVD player and hook up other equipment to my monitor. Which means I need to fix that composite video input. But at least I've got Max Headroom on here. That's one of the things I wanted to achieve. Max is a very 80s analogue kind of guy. Which, by the way, he's going to get rebooted soon. And to be honest, he's kind of crazy. How's it going, stud throb? <laughs> this is so weird. Not half as weird as talking to one of my favorite heroes, Bill Shatner. Well, Bill, how do you account for all those T.J. Hooker fan clubs, T.J. Hooker conventions, fans who stay up late memorizing dialogue from episodes of Star Trek and T.J. Hooker and stuff? Hello? I'm wearing my T.J. Hooker ears! You're crazy. This is so insane. I'm talking to a... I'm talking to a, a television set. I mean, what would happen if I changed channels? Time to ditch this DVD player. I am of course unplugging everything, especially power, before taking this monitor apart. It's important to note that after unplugging a CRT, it can still be dangerous when disassembled. I love these double arrows Sony uses on their products. They tell you which screws to remove for disassembly. This is becoming a tribute symbol for repair. The first glimpse of the internals. It looks like the height of 90s tech. Looking down inside, we can see the tube takes up half the length and the power supply is in the other half. We can also see this very thick red wire that carries the extremely high voltage to the tube. But these tubes can continue to hold very high voltages even when they've been left unplugged for a long time. This is my first time fixing something with a cathode ray tube inside, so safety is the main thing I'm focused on. This plastic support on the side has broken off here, indicating this may have had quite a serious knock in the past. Not a good sign. First, I want to check the rear section where the composite connector is. I feel quite comfortable working in this area because it's far from the tube at the front. I'm really enjoying the internal design. It's all very modular and designed for repair. A real pleasure to work on. The composite connector looks fine and it looks like it's still attached really well. When looking really closely at this row of pins, I can see some solder joints look bad. I don't have a microscope to easily record stuff like this yet, but it looks like there's some circular cracks around these joints, and one of them is labelled composite. Thank you Sony for making these easy to fix products. If this is the problem, then that will be amazing. I have to re-solder this immediately. For good measure, I'm re-soldering all the pins on this row. This is where all the video signals come from the rest of the monitor into this module. I can't wait to see if this works, so I'm only going to assemble enough for testing. That means I'll be powering this up with the cover off. This is a good opportunity to remember to respect mains power and safety. For a composite video source, I'm using my mini DV tape video Walkman. This unit has a faulty LCD that's lost its color. 
making it a great pairing for this monitor. Of course, I have to switch the monitor source back to composite and Eureka, it's actually working. I now have a fully working Sony PVM. This means I'll be able to connect up game consoles in the future and see retro games the way they were meant to be. For the moment though, I'm really pleased the first thing I'm seeing on my PVM is Max Headroom. He belongs on a cathode ray tube. Let me play you my favorite album and take you on a journey. A journey through woodlands and hills. And let's listen to... Yes, some bird song. This is my top of the pops. Oh, yes. Isn't she be 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 beautiful? Beautiful. Do it more. Oh. Listen. Any second now. Oh, wonderful. She's giving it all out there. Oh, you're playing with me. Teasing me. Hey, what? What the hell? Who did that? What's going on? What do you mean they won't get it? Of course they won't. How can they get it? It's a bootleg. With the new reboot in the works, I think it's important to remember where Max Headroom came from and how much he influenced culture in the 1980s and even inspired the world's greatest broadcast signal intrusion hack. I'm curious to know how they will treat this insanely disruptive and subversive personality in the modern age. Good luck, Max. Making this video has also taught me more about recording screens, including learning more about exposure levels, dealing with moiré patterns, and now frame rates and interlaced fields, though I still have some more work to do on getting good colour balance between shots. Have a look at the following sequence and let me know. How do you think I did? Hi. How long have we known each other? Oh, we go way back. You know, we've never sung a song together? You know, that's true. Maybe we better put that right, not time like the present big fella. You know this one? Are you kidding? Grab a line. Try to hang on. We're just good pals. That's Ain't right. got no time for gals. You're the one I rely on, like right guard under nylon. We laugh. We have fun. We sure do. We're, We're like, like the, the double, double barrel of a gun. We go together like days and nights, like legs in the same pair of tights. <laughs> you enjoying this? Since I don't know when. Carry on. Oh, try and stop me. We're just good pals. That's no nice. time for Susie or Sal. We're a couple of machos, far too butch to watch chat shows. Well, football, that's okay. We share a beer, that's, that's our way. Did you know you're my oldest mate? Ah, you old reprobate. <laughs> Say that again. I've seen your style, it sticks out a mile. We sit on a couple of stools, pal, but we ain't a couple of tools, pal. I love you in blue. That's it. Like I bought you for that cruise. Remember that night on B deck when you wore my lemon V neck. But we're butch, we're straight. We go to bed about eight and sleep in separate rooms. That's right, and we don't see each other all night. I like your style, it sticks out a mile. A mile. We sit on a couple of stools, pal, but we ain't a couple of tools, pal. One more? You lead. Tag along. I'm with you. We share a flat, you set. I spill the duvet off your bed. I'll do anything he asks, but I won't wear studded leather. Or masks. I could talk to you for an hour. Me too. I love, I love to you. hear you sing in the shower. 
I might might give you a couple of friendly slaps, but we're just normal chaps. chaps. Well, we are. Don't slink around in silk wraps. Uh Don't share our shower caps. Mm -mm. Don't pose for no weirdo snaps. Well, that's right. Or sit on each other's laps. (laughs) No, sir. Yes, we're just good pals. That's right. Ha ha ha!